Order, please. Parliament is still in session. The next item of business today is the Members' Business Debate on Motion No. 14761 in the name of Bruce Crawford on World Leprosy Day. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put, and I would be grateful if the members who would like to speak in the debate could press the request to speak buttons now. I call on Bruce Crawford to open the debate. Seven minutes, please, Mr Crawford. Uh, thank you, President Officer. I would firstly, as usual, like to sincerely thank all of those who signed the motion and would particularly thank those who stayed behind to listen to the debate today and to take part. World Leprosy Day is a major date in the calendar for those fighting the scourge of humanity that is leprosy. Every year, on the last Sunday in January, in some countries that lasts a whole week, the whole world has a chance to stop and consider the plight of those people who are affected by leprosy around the globe. It is also an opportunity to take stock to celebrate the many stories of hope, transformation and restoration that have been achieved by the Leprosy Commission. Of course, many other organisations, particularly the churches, are also involved alongside the Leprosy Mission in dedicating themselves to the same ultimate goal of eradicating leprosy from the planet and thus transforming people's lives. But it is also an important opportunity to grapple with the scale of the problem that depressingly still exists around the world and the impact this has on individuals and communities. This year, World Leprosy Day will be on Sunday the 31st of January. Now, I have had the pleasure of visiting the Leprosy Mission Scotland's office in my constituency on many occasions during my time as an MSP, and the staff and volunteers there do a remarkable job. I believe some of them may well be in the gallery, and I can see them here today, and I welcome them to the Scottish Parliament. Uh, most recently, I had the pleasure of visiting their office at Liverlands at the beginning of November, when the Minister himself paid an official visit. Now, not only was that visit fun and enjoyable occasion, but we were provided with a very detailed briefing on their most recent projects, including the fantastic work they are doing in Dhaka. In 2013, the Leprosy Mission Scotland received just under £300,000 of Scottish Government funding to help with the rehabilitation project in Dhaka and Bangladesh. The aim of the project is to provide an improved quality of life for people with leprosy and people with related physical disabilities, all rightly with a focus particularly on women. The plan to set up self-health groups for people with disabilities so they can begin training and income generation activities. They also intend to help develop individuals and communities' capacity to have better access to rights and entitlements to health services and improve access to education for their children. The Leprosy Mission Scotland has been helping people across the world since 1874, providing education support to those affected by the disease. The mission has had around 200 projects across 30 countries, mainly in Africa, Asia and around the Pacific, bringing healing and much-needed justice to people affected by leprosy. And the Leprosy Mission Scotland now has agreed that for the next few years, most, if not all, of the support raised in Scotland will specifically go to help people affected by leprosy in seven countries. That is Angola, Bangladesh, India, Myanmar, Nepal, Nigeria and South Sudan. And it was great to go along and see the fabulous work done by Linda Todd, the Chief Executive, and a remarkable team of staff and volunteers they are doing there on a daily basis at the Leprosy Mission Scotland. And as you might imagine, leprosy is a disease which is commonly comes from places of poverty. Dirty surroundings, overcrowding, poor nutrition, housing and sanitation all make people more susceptible to the leprosy infection. Thankfully, however, over 95 per cent of people are naturally resistant to the disease. But let's remind ourselves of the sheer scale of the challenge they are grappling with across the world. Every day, between 600 and 700 people are diagnosed with leprosy. That's an incredible one person every two minutes, and the disease is still prevalent in 19 countries, but more than half of those are affected are still in India. However, it's not all bad news, because during, over the last 20 years, more than 14 million people have been cured of leprosy, and the disease has been eliminated from over 100 countries. Leprosy can be cured, 
an early diagnosis and treatment with multi-drug therapy for a period of six to 12 months can prevent physical and psychological problems escalating. But as well as medicines and surgery, those with complex cases may require therapy, rehabilitation, vocational treating, housing options, and much, much more. For thousands of years, leprosy has been a source of fear and outrage. In many countries, leprosy is still seen as a taboo topic. Sadly, there are still simply too many stories about how people have been disowned by their partners or family and cast out of their communities because of a lack of knowledge and fear surrounding the disease. Fear, persecution, prejudice in many communities mean that people affected by leprosy don't just have to cope with the effects of the disease itself, they often have to face stigma, persecution and injustice, making life doubly difficult. But injustice can come in many forms and it varies widely from place to place from country to country. So removing the stigma attached to the disease not only helps to encourage those affected to seek treatment, but also helps their families and the wider community understand much more about the illness. That's why the Leprosy Mission Scotland's efforts in education field are so vitally important. They're working exceptionally hard at tackling misunderstanding and stigma associated with leprosy. The mission continues to very clearly demonstrate compassion, dedication and enthusiasm to the ultimate goal of defeating leprosy worldwide. Now, my own personal attention to the whole issue of leprosy came actually in primary six when a great old teacher of mine told us about the story of Mary Slesser um, from Aberdeen, who, was called, who eventually became known as the White Queen of Calabar, and she did, had done so much work on leprosy at that time. And I remember the impact it had on me at primary six. So that's why I was so pleased to take part in this debate today. And I know all of the people in this parliament will hope with all our being that the leprosy mission are successful, just as human, humanly possible in eradicating the disease. It is entirely possible to end the scourge on humanity. It just needs common effort and will to make it happen. Thank you. Many thanks. We now turn to the open debate. Uh, speeches of four minutes, please. Kenneth Gibson to be followed by Claire Baker. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And I'd like to thank my colleague Bruce Crawford for securing this important debating time today. And with your indulgence, Presiding Officer, I wish to apologise to the Chamber as I will chair the cross-party group on epilepsy at 1pm. I'll unfortunately have to leave today's members debate before its conclusion. Leprosy is a bacterium transmitted through constant exposure to those living with the disease. And most of us, if we came into contact, would not be affected and our immune systems would fight it off. Still, there are those weakened by malnourishment, for example, who cannot fight and overcome this unbearable disease. Unfortunately, much of the world doesn't even know leprosy still exists, since many associate it as a disease of the ancient past. However, the disease is still prevalent and common in over 100 countries worldwide, with the greatest prevalence in developing countries. Over 200,000 cases were diagnosed by the disease in 2014 alone. It is surely time to increase awareness and work towards eradicating this horrible disease once and for all. For over 30 years, treatment has existed to cure this disease, and although this has dramatically decreased the number of sufferers, those with leprosy are often ostracised, living in communities that marginalise, stigmatise and impoverish them, as Bruce Crawford touched on. Most are unable to continue with employment, obtain an education or have any prospect, or any prospect of marriage, which in some societies is actually banned by law. Even in 20th century Europe, leprosy sufferers could be banished to leper colonies, of which Spinalonga on the island of Crete is probably the most famous and, and operated from 1903 to 1962. Others from Latvia to Spain survived even longer. Because of the way they are treated, those who contract leprosy often ignore the symptoms, making the disease worse whilst running the risk of infecting others. The first signs and symptoms of leprosy start by the appearance of black or discoloured spots on one's skin. Additionally, the small nerves on the skin surface become damaged, creating a loss in pain sensation. When these nerves have been damaged, a simple stone in one's shoe 
or speck in one's eye can cause significant harm since those with leprosy have lost the body's trigger response to feel pain. Sadly, without proper treatment, the nerves will continue to get worse and can cause paralysis to muscle tissue, leading to clawing of the feet and hands. Cuts and burns often left unnoticed can lead to significant infections and ultimately cause disability for those suffering from leprosy. Though treatment can cure the disease and prevent the further degeneration of nerve and tissue damage, unfortunately it is unable to reverse the damage already inflicted. The Leprosy Mission Scotland has travelled to schools, youth groups, congregations and service clubs across the country, raising awareness and support for the eradication of this debilitating disease, working tirelessly to educate the people of Scotland about what leprosy is and, perhaps more importantly, what it isn't, given age-old myths associated with it, how it affects the lives of those infected as well as those around them. Other projects include the Schoonhaven Lepers Village in Ghana, established in 1926. It is a settlement for cured lepers who, when discharged, are often disowned by their families because of the nature of the disease and the traditional dread of the disease. The settlement has since provided a safe haven for 120 people who survive by subsistence farming, government stipends and donations from well-meaning individuals and organisations. In Mozambique, the Mapapa community was set up to treat those suffering from leprosy and today is home to 50 families with 834 memories, members of whom 73 have leprosy. The community has little support and no access to a local health clinic or school, but the Evangelical Church of Christ Mozambique supported by the Church of Scotland, now provides a variety of resources and services to support the community, including agricultural equipment, seeds, medication, personnel and educational resources. President Officer, we recognise World Leprosy Day this Sunday, 31st of January. Since 1991, more than 14 million leprosy patients have been cured, and although numbers continue to fall, there are still those who remain untreated, and most are not aware of its harmful effects other than how it impacts upon their appearance. My hope is that we continue to educate people as the Leprosy Mission of Scotland has done for so long. I support their vision to transform the lives of people affected by leprosy, resourcing care and cure, taking them from rejection to acceptance and from poverty to economic independence. Many thanks. And I call Claire Baker to be followed by Stuart Maxwell. Um, thank you, President Officer. I'm pleased to speak in this debate. And I'd also like to congratulate Bruce Crawford on securing the debate. I'd also like to welcome Leprosy Mission Scotland to the gallery this lunchtime. Uh, as Bruce, said, Bruce Crawford said, World Leprosy Day is the 31st of January this Sunday, and it's an important way to focus minds and um, to highlight the impact of this condition on too many people around the world, people who are living in the poorest countries around the world with this condition too often leading to a life of isolation, extreme poverty and stigma. It is a tragedy that people suffer from this disease. Um, other, other, others have said it is completely curable, yet in 2014, 214,000 people were diagnosed with leprosy, but it is estimated that millions still go undiagnosed. The incubation period is around five years, but it can take up to 20 years to manifest itself. It can be cured with modern medicine, but if not tackled early enough, it can lead to life-changing disabilities. Um, attitudes towards leprosy are historic and complex, and the stigma is long established that is deeply rooted in many cultures. In India, there are currently 17 laws that discriminate against people with leprosy or people who have had leprosy. But the fear and discrimination comes from a lack of education on this disease, and more needs to be done. Uh, Bruce Crawford highlighted countries that are supported by Leprosy Mission Scotland. Um, India, Bangladesh, Mozambique are countries that are supported by the charity Lepra. And as Bruce Crawford said, it's in, you know, the, these kind of charities, these dedicated charities, are so important um, to work with other partners. Small amounts of money can make a huge difference to countries' health and education structures to improve the lives and raise awareness. And £15 could train a community volunteer to recognise signs of leprosy. And this is a, a very important role. We can't underestimate the importance of local people, of community activists and of peer discussion. And we've seen often the most effective way to tackle very stubborn issues and issues connected with, um, with long-standing views and with stigma. It's often the best way to tackle these issues is through the involvement of local people. It's an argument. It needs hearts and minds to be won over as well as just the, the basic policies needing to be changed. Um, the organisation LEPRA also hosts the academic journal Leprosy Review, 
and this looks at topics including research into the medical, physical and social aspects of leprosy and information that is relevant to leprosy control. And it's important to support academic research as well as take direct action. So this Sunday gives us an opportunity to raise awareness. I see there's a social media campaign uh, planned for Sunday as well as petitions and fundraising activity. And as Bruce Crawford said, Leprosy Mission Scotland is based in Stirling, which is in my region. And in Fife, many churches have a close relationship with uh, Leprosy Scotland, including St Leonard's in St Andrews, where the minister has taken part in Mercy Missions to Nepal with Leprosy Mission Scotland. And that's an important part of the contribution that we can make, that volunteers travel to support local projects and offer their skills and experience. But we also need international commitment and cooperation to challenge attitudes and practices. The example of Indians, India's laws is a case in point. This is a human rights issue, as well as offering aid and support. There is a need for dip diplomacy and a political argument to be won in terms of tackling discrimination and stigma. So I would like to wish Leprosy Scotland uh, Leprosy Mission Scotland well with their plans uh, for Sunday. I know there will be speakers at a number of church services across Scotland and I would like to thank all the volunteers in Scotland who spent time fundraising, raising awareness of this condition and also travelling overseas to support the many activities that are taking part. Thank you. Many thanks. I now call Stuart Maxwell to be followed by Jackson Carlaw. <clears throat> thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I begin by, uh, like others, congratulating Bruce Crawford on securing this important debate. Uh, leprosy, or Hansen's disease, it is, as it is also known, is an ancient disease recorded in records for at least two and a half thousand years, and a disease that has been greatly feared by many. Indeed, the word leopard means not just a person suffering from leprosy, it has the additional meaning of being a social outcast, because that is what a sufferer from leprosy was, a person who was considered unclean, with all the implications of being morally deficient, as well as physically afflicted. Few diseases have carried such a heavy social burden as leprosy. And this is curious because leprosy, of course, is not an inherited condition, nor, though it, is a, though it is a bacterial infection, is it highly infectious. In fact, as others have said, around 95% of the world's population have natural immunity to the leprosy bacterium. The reason that leprosy was so feared was that it was so disfiguring and disabling. And yet leprosy is today a perfectly curable disease. A drug to successfully treat leprosy became available in the 1940s, but it wasn't until the 1970s with the available of MDT, multi-drug therapy, that it became possible to consider eradicating leprosy. And yet, leprosy persists still. Certainly not in the great numbers of people that are afflicted in years gone by, but still there are people suffering from leprosy today. In 1985, around 5.2 million people suffered from leprosy, but by 2014, there were around 200,000 cases worldwide. Now, this represents a fall in the prevalence of leprosy of over 75%, a fantastic achievement, and one that I think not enough people are aware of. However, there are, of course, sadly, some places where there are pockets in which leprosy is endemic, such as Nepal, Brazil, Sudan, and Indonesia, to name but a few. Like tuberculosis, another ancient disease, there is still a stigma attached to leprosy, and this means that people are reluctant sometimes to come forward for diagnosis and more importantly, possibly for treatment. This is a great pity because only early diagnosis and treatment can mean that the patient can be cured before they have suffered permanent nerve damage, which is what causes the disfigurement and disabilities associated with the disease. The Leprosy Mission Scotland is a Christian charity based in Stirling, which has been operating since 1874, just one year after the Norwegian doctor G. H. A. Hansen discovered the bacterium which causes leprosy. Leprosy Mission Scotland is con concerned not only with looking after those with leprosy and curing them, but also working for justice for those who suffer from the stigma associated with this disease. People still fear leprosy, and a person who is diagnosed may find that they have been evicted from their home, are ostracised the by their neighbours, and lose their job. This is despite the fact that once a person starts treatment for the disease, they are very quickly no longer contagious and able to lead a perfectly normal life. Early diagnosis and prompt treatment means that it is possible to have a full recovery, suffer no long-term effects, and to be completely cured. But the social consequences of having contracted leprosy are not so easily overcome. The World Leprosy Day falls on the last Sunday in January each year, 31st of January this year, and in 2016, Leprosy Mission Scotland wishes to focus on rebuilding Nepal. The World Health Organization has stated that the prevalence of leprosy in Nepal was 2.6 cases per 10,000 of the population 
with the number of reported cases in Nepal in 2013 standing at 3,225. In April 2015, there was, of course, a devastating earthquake in Nepal, a particularly devastating blow for those Nepalese who suffer from leprosy, a disease that is both prevalent in the poor and causes people to fall into poverty. In fact, the Leprosy Mission Hospital in An Anand, and you would struggle with this one, Anandaban, not far from Kathmandu, was the only hospital in the area with the facilities to treat many of the earthquake victims. Presiding officer, let us this year on World Leprosy Day applaud the work of Leprosy Mission Scotland, which is bringing hope, justice and dignity to so many. And let us remember also the victims of the terrible earthquake in Nepal. Many thanks. I now call Jackson Carlaw to be followed by John Mason. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Uh, can I too welcome uh, the opportunity for this debate to take place in Parliament today and thank Bruce Crawford for that and also associate myself with all of the comments that have been made in this short but informed debate so far, indeed, to the extent that I don't wish to repeat everything that's already been said. Um, I'd like to talk something a little bit more about the stigma. I was born in April 1959. In November that year, William Wyler's 11 Academy Award-winning MGM film starring Charlton Heston, Ben-Hur, was released. And if there is a greater recruiting sergeant for stigma and prejudice about leprosy, it's difficult to think what it might be. And yet it is a film which I think it's impossible to escape even today because it's shown at least once a month somewhere uh, without any context. And it's difficult to think of anything in popular culture that has ever been released subsequently which counters that in any way or any kind of drama which has been associated with trying to show the context of leprosy in the modern era. For many people... It is a biblical disease for which there is no cure, even though common sense dictates that that must be different. And I think that's very unfortunate because when one looks at the prejudice that many people face, whether that is uh, individuals being evicted from their homes, uh, families breaking down, children being denied education, people being unable to find work, people being denied medical treatment, all of that, as is the case with other illnesses that we have discussed from time to time in this chamber, is fueled by ignorance. And in this case, an ignorance which is not borne out by the reality, which is that this, even though there are people contracting it today, is a disease which can be successfully treated and treated uh, inexpensively, restoring to people that dignity and opportunity in life. And that's why I'm delighted uh, to be able to congratulate the leprosy mission, the, the 140 years of contribution made by Scotland as so fitting with the kind of narrative of Scottish involvement in the wider world and the campaign they have this year uh, to celebrate the 140 years to encourage the participation of young people through a gap year across 140 churches to further extend the work of trying to eliminate and counter the effects of the disease and the prejudice that's associated with it. And I'm delighted also to congratulate the government for the support that has been announced, uh, that they have given previously, and which has been referred to in the debate this afternoon, uh, to play a part in that, uh, that work. Uh, it's great that there are individuals present here today. That's not always the case when we are able to uh, comment or celebrate a particular organisation. Uh, I would say to them on behalf of this parliament, uh, we are very grateful for the work that you do. It enhances both the reputation of Scotland. It is good that it is tackling in a modern context a disease which can be beaten and yet which still exists. And I hope that we reflect on the ongoing subconscious stigma that can sometimes translate itself into young people. That film I remember vividly at the time represented leprosy as almost something more terrifying than the Daleks when I was at that age. And I was at that age when I first saw it. It was represented as something that had to be shut away, feared, and shunned. And I don't actually remember anything other than my own interest in seeking to identify what the reality might be and reading about it on a proactive basis that corrected that. I didn't, on a reactive basis, find myself exposed to better information. And I think that's something we should reflect on uh, as we try to counter the stigma that still is attached to a disease that can so easily now be cured with effort and with money. 
Thank you, Mr Carlo. Could I just point out for future reference, if you turn your back on the microphone, it makes it difficult for us to hear and also for the official report. Thanks very much. John Mason. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. It did give us the benefit of seeing Jackson Carlo's uh, face <laughs> in the back benches. Uh, I would thank Bruce Crawford for bringing forward this important topic. And uh, firstly, if I can comment on the specifics of the leprosy mission, uh, I've known them for a, I've known of them for a long time, and I have to say I think very highly of them, as clearly others do in the chamber today. And as others have said, many, for many of us, leprosy was one of those things you heard about as a child. And I think there has been a kind of assumption that it was one of those diseases that we have dealt with and it has gone away. But sadly, eh, that is not the case. I was looking at Wikipedia and similar figures to others that have been quoted. It said that in 2012, there were 230,000 new cases, again, with half of these being in India. But the good news on the figure front is that 16 million people have been cured of leprosy in the last 20 years. But of course, being cured does not necessarily take away the stigma. All of this really came home to me in the 1980s when I lived in Nepal. Leprosy was still fairly common there, and you frequently saw people with real deformities caused by the disease, even if it was no longer active in their bodies. Nepal is a society which values physical contact, and so that raised interesting questions like, do you hug somebody who has clearly had leprosy? There is still a huge amount of stigma around leprosy today, even as there was in Jesus' day, when people had to ring a bell as they approached and shout unclean eh, and these things. And I know that the Leprosy Mission Scotland is keen that we do not use the word leper, eh, as that has had so many negative connotations around it, as Stuart Maxwell said in his speech. Now, clearly, charities like the Leprosy Mission deserve our support in financial and other ways, which leads on to the other point I wanted to make in today's debate, the wider issue of charity fundraising, and in particular changes that are flowing from the Etherington report. This report stems from the fact that some charities have clearly been overzealous, to say the least, in their fundraising activities. As a result, the intention is to have a fundraising preference service whereby someone could reset their preferences, that is, opt out of any charity contacting them whatsoever. Now, potentially, this could even present an existing sorry, prevent an existing charity contacting one of their own regular supporters if that person had misunderstood the new system. They might have thought that they were only asking that no new charity should contact them, whereas they were actually asking that no charity contact them. Now, I have to say I'm a little unclear about this uh, whole issue and if the Etherington report will fully apply in Scotland. So I have written to Alec Neill about this, and I know he is aware because he attended the event uh, run by Oscar and the Institute of Fundraising where it was raised in Parliament a little while ago. However, I wanted to mention it specifically today as the Leprosy Mission has raised that uh, with myself. Finally, there has been a feeling that leprosy has been one of the, a number of neglected tropical diseases and that governments and the international community have not really prioritised it sufficiently. I very much hope that today's debate will help redress that balance. Many thanks. Can I now invite Hamza Youssef to respond to the debate. Minister, seven minutes, please. Uh, <coughs> thank you, Presiding Officer, and uh, my thanks to Bruce Crawford for bringing this debate uh, to the Scottish Parliament. He referenced uh, the fact that he and I visited uh, the Leprosy Mission Scotland uh, at the end of last year. I'm delighted that their volunteers and their staff, uh, and indeed uh, their uh, chair, director, uh, Linda Todd, uh, is here uh, with her team. Uh, I was blown away by the work that they do. Um, important, of course, this mo motion is to recognise uh, World Leprosy Day taking place uh, this Sunday. But in terms of the work done by the Leprosy Mission in Scotland, I would urge all members of the Scottish Parliament, uh, whether you're passing through Stirling uh, or not, to certainly uh, pop into their offices and see for yourself the amount of work they do. An incredible organisation because uh, with such a small team, a couple of things struck me. One was the dedication of their volunteers. Uh, yes, the staff do a fantastic job and work, I would say, above and beyond the call of duty. But I was also taken by how many people from the local community uh, give up their own free time uh, to, to help to spread awareness uh, of leprosy uh, and have been there for many, many years doing so. But also what I was impressed with was the grassroots uh, community credentials that the organisation, uh, the Leprosy Mission in Scotland, had. So I'm delighted that they're here and delighted to extol the virtues of the good work 
they do. And I'm not just saying that because they gave me a wonderful cup of tea and a few pastries on my last visit either. Uh, leprosy, as many of the members, I thought some really excellent contributions, presiding officer, uh, from uh, across the chamber. This is, I think, why we have members' debates in the first place, to raise awareness of issues that probably wouldn't necessarily get time uh, in this chamber. And I think leprosy, the awareness of leprosy, uh, is, is uh, one of those issues. I, I want to just re-emphasise some of what's been said without hopefully repeating too much of it. it is, uh, leprosy is one of those diseases where if you speak to people about it, many people are astounded that leprosy still exists. Uh, Bruce Crawford and I were saying that during our visit. Uh, this was shared by the Leprosy Mission in Scotland. They still have people who come to them and go, I didn't even realise your organisation was needed anymore because they thought it was a disease uh, that had been eradicated many, many moons ago. Uh, but it hasn't been, of course, and it's to our shame, actually, as an international community, that a disease that was <coughs> prevalent in the time of Christ and even before that, actually, uh, is still being suffered by many people across the world. And then there's the point uh, that many members across the chamber uh, made, I think almost all members made across the chamber, uh, and laterally very powerfully by Jackson Carlow, is this issue about stigma uh, that exists about uh, those who suffer from uh, leprosy. Uh, that stigma is important for us uh, to tackle in countries that are, where, where leprosy is prevalent, because it will be a barrier to those who can get a cure, who can be treated. Uh, that can be an absolute uh, barrier that is in the way if they are portrayed as outcasts uh, and they are treated as people who are undeserving or in the worst of cases some of that stigma comes from uh, the fact that some beliefs some cultures uh, suggest that leprosy is a result of actions uh, that that person has caused because of uh, a bad action that they committed in the past or even in a past life uh, and that is uh, certainly a social stigma uh, that we are uh, encouraged to try to defeat. Uh, the Scottish Government has invested uh, almost uh, over 480,000 supporting the Leprosy Mission Scotland's work in Bangladesh. This money has helped to improve the quality of the life of people living with lep leprosy. It has also improved their social economic status by providing loans and training on income generating activities. And that latter point is actually quite important. Providing the loans and training for income generating activities helps to defeat that social stigma that exists. Uh, somebody who suffers from leprosy that is cast as an outcast uh, by their own societies and cultures, suddenly being able to, to have a loan, access to capital, to become a businessman or woman in their own local area, providing a service, providing business, maybe having a team working under them, actually helps to defeat that social stigma uh, as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Through the Leprosy Missions Rehabilitation Programme uh, in DACA, we have supported people left disabled uh, by leprosy, giving people, especially women, the skills and knowledge they need to access the government health services they are entitled to, as well as improving access to education for their children. Uh, Scotland has a very good record, uh, presiding officer, of uh, contributing to global health, and I'll go into some of that uh, in a second. I thought I'd better touch upon uh, John Mason's question about the Edrington uh, report. He will, of course, receive a, a full response from Alec Neil. Uh, in good time, who I know he has written to. Uh, what I would say is uh, the Scottish uh, Council for Voluntary Organisations and the Charity Regulator in Scotland, uh, as he alluded to, Oscar, uh, are now in a process of consultation. So how that Eddington report should, uh, how it should apply to Scotland is something that they're consulting the sector. And I think that's probably the best approach to take. Speak to the sector, bring them round the table, uh, hear from them their views. But we essentially want to achieve two object objectives from that consultation. The first objective, that there should be a positive environment whereby within the sector that can help charities and NGOs to flourish. That's very, very important. But secondly, and I think equally as important, I think John Mason would understand this, uh, that there should be public trust and confidence in the sector. So we can achieve those two objectives. Uh, so that doesn't mean that we have to fully apply all of the Etherington report. I think it's important. Let's consult with the NGOs uh, and let's see what can be done uh, so that we can achieve those two objectives. Um, we know that last year was the implementation, presiding officer, of the sustainable development goals, and it's important that as part of those goals that infectious diseases uh, are uh, tackled. We all have responsibility to do that at home because the sustainable, sustainable development goals are implementable at home, uh, but also uh, overseas as well. So Scotland was one of the first nations to sign up 
uh, to the UN SDGs Global Goals in July 2015. Uh, these, game, those, these goals came into effect on the 1st of January of this year, and we will, uh, be, they will be implemented through our national performance framework. So we will do everything that we possibly can to ensure that we uh, assist in this effort at home, but importantly, overseas and abroad as well. So in conclusion, Presiding Officer, I'm proud that Scotland is a, a good global citizen playing its part in the fight against leprosy and other global health challenges. I want to commend uh, and, and really uh, take my hat off to the efforts of the Leprosy Mission in Scotland, but also the leprosy missions that are worldwide. Uh, this uh, disease uh, cannot be eradicated uh, without a collective effort internationally, uh, but not just a collective effort uh, from one organisation or from organisations in Scotland, but across the world. But it is on the backbone of the volunteers that give up their free time uh, to defeat this uh, that I think actually we will be ultimately successful in seeing the complete eradication of this disease from anywhere in the world. And I'm happy to support the motion from my colleague Bruce Crawford. <coughs> Many thanks, Minister. That concludes Bruce Crawford's debate on World Leprosy Day. And I now suspend this meeting of Parliament until 2.30pm.